what it means uh, to be on the Quad S program. So what what does that Quad S, why does it exist? So it's part of Quiet Skies. First, Quiet Skies. Here is the purpose of the program. Now, understand, this is how they, the purpose of the program and how they labeled our colleague, a former member of Congress, a current member of our armed forces, a veteran of combat, and uh, again, a former uh, presidential candidate, someone who's very outspoken and very public, uh, so not really hiding what they're what they are doing. Uh, I, the purpose of the Quiet Skies program is to mitigate the threat to commercial aviation posed by unknown or or partially known terrorists. Not only do you get the enhanced screening, there are three air marshals that are following this subject, in this case, Tulsi Gabbard, on every leg of every flight they take. So if you have a layover, a different team would join you at the other airport and then accompany you to the next destination. Uh, It includes multiple dog canine squads that are trained in explosive detection. And it also uh, entails uh, a supervisor from TSA that's plain clothes as well. Uh, observing this as they watch you go through this process. And this, once again, this Obama-Biden era program, Quiet Skies, has uh, been expanded, according to reporting. You you mentioned what the purpose is, and they also say that they use it to identify and provide enhanced screening to high-risk travelers before they board aircraft based on analysis of terrorist travel trends, tradecraft and associations. Uh, Tristan, I wanted to go to you first, even before we had Tulsi on, uh, because just to kind of go through the process here of how Empower Oversight uh, uh, was notified as well and got in touch. With, I mean, Tulsi started realizing what was happening to her, and then uh, whistleblowers uh, came out and reached out to Empower Oversight. So there's a group called the Air Marshal National Council, and uh, the president of that, Dave Londo, their executive director, Sonia Labosco, they've been very active in law enforcement circles and trying to highlight abuses, um, you know, broadly in the federal law enforcement community, but particularly within the air marshals. And, uh, you know, they they have been at that work for quite some time. So Sonia and I have been in touch on other cases. And so she first reached out and said, hey, we've got some real, um, we've got some whistleblowers here who are really afraid. And so that's how I first started uh, getting in touch with most recently some of these individuals. And Power had also done some work um, a couple of years ago before I joined while I was still uh, working in the executive branch. But my partner, Jason Foster, had worked with an earlier federal air marshal who had also had some similar monitoring of his own spouse and uh, had been working to try and get that resolved. And so there's a long history on this issue. And uh, we're, we're happy to join these whistleblowers and trying to ensure that they are protected for making these disclosures that are absolutely indicative of gross waste in the TSA, not to mention an abuse of authority when it becomes really clear that Tulsi Gabbard is not an aviation security threat. Tulsi, I want to go directly to you. You know that you were on, you're, you're kind of thinking back and you're like, okay, I know I did a Fox News interview on July 23rd. And the next time I took a flight was a couple days later. And I had that quad S designation, which randomly sometimes is put on on any of our tickets. And if it's random once in a while, that's that's no big deal. That was supposed to be how it worked. Uh, but then you noticed it kept happening and happening and happening. Um, and and so you realize this is this is something bigger. And then we've have whistleblowers come out saying that you've been put on you know a quiet the quiet skies list. You know the the closest word that that I could think of that can begin to describe what I felt and what I feel uh, in learning that actually, according to these whistleblowers, that I am on this quiet skies list, that my own government, my president, my commander in chief uh, is targeting me as a potential domestic terrorist. The closest word that comes to mind is 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 a complete sense of betrayal. Uh, and, and it's betrayal because I, like so many Americans, enlisted because of the Islamist terrorist attacks on 9-11, uh, enlisted to serve in our country's military, to ensure the safety, security, and freedom of the American people, to go after and defeat and destroy those Islamist terrorists uh, who pose, continue to pose the greatest short and long-term threat to us, to our security, and to our freedom. And so now after serving over 21 years and continuing to serve in our nation's military, my own government has labeled and is targeting me directly now as a domestic terrorist, as they are many others. I'm not alone in this. 
Of course, this list is not being made public, but but we can look to what the Biden-Harris administration has done in multiple cases of how they have uh, there have been leaked conversations, leaked files, leaked documents, and even statements they've made in public saying that this threat of domestic terrorism and extremism is so great and often very likely it is those in the military or military veterans uh, who are these potential threats here at home. Uh, it is more than a slap in the face. It's more than a punch in the gut. It is a complete betrayal coming from our own government that they are using our taxpayer dollars, our resources. They are using people like the air marshals uh, to, to a, as weapons and pawns to target their political opponents. And that's really what this is all about. Yeah, I think what happened here, Tulsi, sometimes is actually, it's not a good thing for you. But I think for the country, because of your profile, this could be a good thing for all Americans because, you know, you're already a colleague of ours at ACLJ. We do this kind of work. We're going to be representing you. We've already got the FOIA going there. Uh, we were going to take other legal action. Lawsuits are coming. Uh, but then you're also, by you taking a stand in your public stand, along with those whistleblowers that we're, we've worked with before and defended their rights and protections, uh, we're able to expose this program to the American people and, and your your willingness to come and speak out about it. But I also want you to, to just to tell people, your husband ended up on this as well. And he is not someone who is, is outspoken like you or is, is out in the political world every day. This just points to the insanity of, of what this government is doing. Uh, my husband is a cinematographer. He he makes films and commercials and music, music videos. Uh, he supports me and what I do, and I'm so grateful for it. But he is not at all involved in any kind of political discourse or debate, either in person uh, or online. And so for him to be receiving the very same treatment that I have been receiving with this continual quad S is what they called it. You showed the the image of the boarding pass, the SSSS mark. Uh, he was just on a flight a couple of days ago uh, and still has that showing up on his boarding pass. And so for people who don't know what that means, it means that you cannot check in online. You have to get your board, whether you have check-in luggage or not, you've got to get your boarding pass from the ticketing agent. They will hand you the boarding pass. If you have TSA pre-check, that goes out the window. You go through the regular TSA line. Once you get there, you got to wait for a supervisor to come and show up. can take a little while, as we've experienced. They have to shut down an entire lane, an entire screening lane through the TSA checkpoint just to screen you individually because it takes so long. They will check all of your electronics. They will empty every single article, your toothbrush, uh, your underwear, your clothing, your books, your you know battery charger, every single article from your carry-on luggage and screen and swipe every single piece of it. So it takes 30 to 45 minutes. And then once they give you the all clear, then you go and you board your flight. And sometimes you may get additional screening at the gate before you're allowed to walk onto the plane. So this is not only happening to me, it has happened to me. It's continuing to happen to my husband. And it happens to a lot of other people. I heard from a TSA employee through one of these experiences, and I'm not going to out them at all, but they they could not make sense of the fact that how, how someone in the military could be getting this screening and also how they had seen how Trump supporters who previously were not in that quad S designation now were continuously marked with quad S on their boarding pass. So through our legal action, I'm grateful to ACLJ and you and Jay and, and your whole team that's come together to fight for our First Amendment rights in this country so that we can shut down these constitutional actions and take it all the way to the Supreme Court if we have to.